When Allah says, get young people married, or get non-married people married, allow them to get married, this is a broad commandment. And who does it apply to? You would think it applies to people, okay, once this boy has graduated from school, once he's got a good job, once he's got a good amount of savings, once he's got you know, a little bit of the return on investment paid back to his parents, you know, everybody else in the family is taken care of, then we'll think about getting him married because if we get him married right now, all of his attention will go to his wife. We're not gonna get anything. The first point I wanted to make is, how do we make marriage easy? Because this is something, this is the way of shaitan. The way of shaitan in a society is, you make the haram easy, and you make the halal difficult. That, and when that happens in a society, shaitan is one. When that is the door to the unhealthy, the, the filthy, the impermissible is wide open, and then that young man comes to his parents and says, I think I need to get married. I know I'm only in my third year of college, but this is getting out of hand, mom. This is getting out of hand, dad. I think, I, and he doesn't say, dad, my hormones are driving me crazy. Man, the girls on campus, I don't even know what to tell you. Seriously though, you know, this one girl keeps texting me out. He's not gonna talk like that to his dad or his mom. He's just gonna say, mom, I think I need to get married. He's gonna code it in a nice way. And then what do parents do? They humiliate this young man. Oh, can't hold it in, huh? Can't control yourself? Well, I was 40 when I got married and your father starts giving you lectures. You know? Like, how are you 40? You're 50 now. <laughs> you know? So what we've done as parents oftentimes is oppress and suppress what naturally Allah put inside of us, especially in a time when the haram is wide open, then you have to go out of your way to make the halal easy. You didn't put, you're trying to pretend that the world is still what it was, it's not. The world has changed. Which comes to the next point. When some proposal comes your way, you have daughters. Like I have daughters. May Allah Azza wa help all of us who have daughters. You know? Oh, and sons too, I'll throw them in the dua. But you know like, but if, the, if you have daughters and some proposal comes, she's of the age, it's a good match, she likes him, it's okay to ask, do you like him? It's not, it's not haram to ask, it's actually an important thing to ask, do you like him? She says, I don't like how he looks, done, finished, you can't force them anymore. I don't like, I'm not attracted to him. Astaghfirullah, that will come, Allah will put it in your heart. No, it won't. That's not how it works. If she says, I don't like him, he's too fat, he's too short, he's ugly, I'm, you know, I don't like his personality, whatever she says, she doesn't even have to give you a reason. She doesn't, she could just say no, that's it. When you force a woman to get married to someone she doesn't want to marry, when you put you know, emotional pressure on her and say, if you don't marry him, nobody's gonna marry you, your family's gonna be humiliated, we've already printed the cards. When you do this kind of thing to your girls and you get them married, and then emotionally they're not in that marriage. They're still human beings. A human being still needs companionship. A human being still wants somebody who, who they can be attracted to, who they can find comfort in. That desire does not go away. And that desire will now be fulfilled by fantasy, by them thinking about things, by late night going on social media, by other things. You force them into rebelling against Allah because you force them into a marriage they didn't want to begin with. Don't push this on your, on your daughters. But coming back, this is about men and about women. The young men of our community actually have to now stand up for themselves and have to say, I'm ready to get married. And I have somebody in mind. And that's, that's the next thing I want to share with you. You know, when it comes to, you want a marriage that lasts forever. Like we want, to, we want our boy to have the perfect girl. Good luck with that, by the way. Uh, because perfection is... Not gonna happen in this, and your boy isn't perfect. Let me, let me tell you, if you don't know, let me tell you. We're all human beings, and human beings have flaws, and sometimes, sometimes things work, and sometimes things don't work. But let me tell you, when a young man and a young woman are old enough to get married, that actually means they're old enough to make their own choice. Let me repeat myself. When they're old enough to get married, they're old enough to make their own choice. And maybe you don't like their choice. And your job and my job as parents is to advise them and say, I don't think this is a good choice. I think that this is, you could do better. I, and, and you're, by the way, as a parent, I think I'm always going to say you could do better. I'm always going to say that. But maybe, and maybe you think this is a mistake. But if your son is 25 years old, your daughter is 30 years old, 
and she wants to make a mistake, that halal mistake is way better. That halal mistake is way, way, and it, maybe things don't work out in three years. That's still better. That's still better than you refusing, because I have seen enough cases, I don't talk in theory, I'm talking based on what I've seen, the conversations I've had with people, with real Muslim families around the world, especially around the United States and Canada, where people are, this, this man comes and says, I want to marry this girl, the father says, no, you're not from the same country, you're not from the same culture or whatever, you can't get married to my daughter, or the other way around, but these two are still already emotionally attached, so they're texting each other, talking to each other, hanging out with each other, having dinner with each other, parents don't know, five, six years go by, they're refusing other proposals, then the girl is forced to marry somebody else, and she's still talking to the guy. And all of this was that, that evil, that evil, that this whoever she married didn't deserve this. He didn't deserve this. But all of that evil was created by the stubbornness of parents who didn't realize that their children live in a different time. Where, where allowing marriage first is a bigger priority than anything else. The only marriage proceedings mentioned in the Qur'an are that of Musa salam, Like from 0 to 100, like finding a girl and getting married to a girl. You know, that whole spectrum is captured in the story of Musa salam. Just a few things about that. First and foremost, he's, a, he's from Banu Israel, yes? He's an Israelite. And he is homeless. He's a fugitive from the law. He ran from Egypt because he accidentally killed someone. So he's homeless, he's an Israelite, he's a fugitive. He ends up in an Arab, Arab tribe, Madian. He ends up in Arab land, where he finds a couple of girls and he helps them. And one of the girls indirectly told her father she's interested in him. And the father immediately said yes. And they got married. So an Israeli got married to an Arab in the Qur'an. And the one from Israel was also homeless and a fugitive from the law. The only thing the father needed to see was three things. One, the girl's interested. That was number one. She liked him. Number two, he's strong. He's got good character, good qualities in him. He can do a job. He can make money. He can defend my family. And then he's trustworthy. He had plenty of opportunity to do the wrong thing, he did no such thing, he carried himself with dignity. When you have these three qualities, ethnicity didn't matter, financial status didn't matter, none of that mattered. None of that mattered. As a matter of fact, in this case, if nowadays when you say this, it sounds suicidal, for 10 years, between 8 and 10 years, Musa salam lived with his in-laws and worked for his father-in-law. And his paycheck came from his in-laws. Today when you say to somebody, hey, where do you work? Oh, I work for my father-in-law, and I live with them too. <laughs> well, what a, what a guy, this is a real man? This is a man even, he lives with his in-laws? You want to question the manhood of Musa salam? Try what, see what happens to you. Because you don't want to get punched by that man, salam. <laughs> what I'm saying is there are sometimes unusual situations. And Allah mentions them on purpose in the Qur'an because sometimes the marriage is going to be under unusual situations. Not every situation can be ideal. And in your family, if there's an unusual situation, don't sit there and cry, why couldn't we have a normal kind of situation? That's okay. Life is not about normal. Actually, when you dig deep in every family, there's no such thing as normal. Every one of us is weird. Every one of us has strange situations in their family. So we have to adapt and we have to be flexible and we have to be merciful to our coming generation allowing them to get married in a healthy way and having that open conversation with our sons and with our daughters. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless this community with healthy marriages. May Allah Azza wa Jal allow us to do right by our children and our children to do right by their children in raising children on Islam. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim.